some of you all have had sharp disagreement with people and your conclusion is, so I don't need nobody. Yes, you do. Do not live your life without accountability and partnership and somebody to help you and somebody to encourage you and somebody to sharpen you. You need somebody. Jesus is not enough. Even the Lone Ranger had a sidekick, and you need one too. Hello, and thanks for joining us for today's Destined for Victory with Pastor Paul Shepard. Our theme for the past few days has been the importance of partnership, with special emphasis being placed on finding the right partners. Today, we return to the story of the Apostle Paul, a man who fostered relationships with like-minded believers who helped strengthen his faith and grow his ministry. Without those partners, well, he wouldn't have been the Apostle Paul. Be sure and come see us at PastorPaul.net to hear any recent Destined for Victory message on demand. That's PastorPaul.net. You can subscribe to the podcast at Spotify or wherever you enjoy your podcasts. Now, with today's Destined for Victory message, finding the right partners, here is Pastor Paul. Paul found new companionship because he and Barnabas couldn't get together on the plan. Sometimes... You and the others who have been partners with you, you cannot continue your partnership because of irreconcilable differences. It happens sometimes. We're trying to do this ministry together, but we see this two different ways and we can't find a way to get on the same page. That's what happened with Paul and Barnabas. Paul said, read my lips. John Mark is not going on this trip and Barnabas said well he's going with me and Paul said well you and John Mark can uh, uh, (laughs) some of y'all ought to be glad but you mad about this extension of point one because you had you had it all straight in your mind why you were through it, folk, and how you were through it, folk, and now I'ma finally get to just be me and Jesus. And I showed up to tell you, no, it's not gonna work that way. You need people, and if the old one's not working anymore, find some new ones. Now I'm not talking to you, married folk. Oh, you wish you had left before that sentence. You wish you were out of the building before that sentence so you could go home and tell somebody, I got a word today. (laughs) Not talking to married folk. You married that, you live with that. You pray. You let that grow you up and make you mature and draw you closer to the Lord. Amen. If you don't have biblical grounds, you can't get rid of them. And they're not a whole lot of biblical grounds. Come check me and make an appointment. Well, Pastor, what are they? Make an appointment. Let's talk. Because in most cases, you got to stick with that. Because you said till death, not till misery. So you learn how to take it from misery to manageable. Amen. Oh, you real mad now. You need partnership. And if these partners don't work, find some that will. And make sure that what you declare a partnership that won't work is not because you are being unbiblically stubborn. See, what Paul and Barnabas realized is that both of them had a legitimate point of view. It's not like one was right, one was wrong. Both had a legitimate point of view. Barnabas said, encouragement is what I do. It's part of my gift mix. It's what I do. When I see somebody weak, I try my best to make them strong. Paul, on the other hand, didn't have that in his gift mix. 
Paul said, I need warriors. Look at how he writes to his spiritual son, Timothy. My son, be strong in the Lord. You're a soldier in the Lord's army. Soldiers don't fool with civilian affairs. They want to please their commanding officer. That's his mindset. That's my mindset as a discipler. I encourage people pretty good, but it's not one of my strongest gifts. I think I do a pretty good job, but it's not one of my strong. I I can relate a whole lot to the Apostle Paul. At a certain point, I'm like, you can't be on my team. I love you, though. Love you. Don't get me wrong. I love you. But where I got to go and what I got to face, I can't deal with some baby Huey overgrown, underdeveloped, don't know whether you coming or going. Can't do it. You got to be ready to shape up. I was discipled that way. My daddy was my spiritual father. Got saved under his ministry. Got called under his ministry. My first ministry full-time job was working for him. And I couldn't please him at first to save my natural life. And he let me know every time I didn't please him. It seemed to me there was a whole period of time in my young ministry as young associate pastor. It seemed to me there was a whole period of time. I'm sure it wasn't as much as it felt as it feels like. But it feels like just about every other Sunday, he was up telling the church what else I didn't do right. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't that often, but it just feels when I look back on it. Part of the announcements. And, okay, now as for what the pastor, social pastor did wrong this week. Because I was a rookie. I'm just learning. I'm just growing. I'm just getting my ABCs of ministry down. And he was quick to let me know, nope, that's not it. But it made me determine, God, if you called me to ministry and if you called me to work with him before I get to being a senior pastor, which was clear part of my calling, then I said, Lord, help me to learn what I need to learn and grow where I need to grow and shut my mouth when I feel like yelling and help me to prove faithful. And seven years later, when I was leaving there to come to California chasing a vision, my daddy cried his eyes out because I was the best assistant pastor he could ever imagine having. (laughs) Cried his eyes out. He was a pitiful man. And I was happy. (laughs) Let me clear up. Not that he was pitiful. I'm happy that I made full proof of my ministry. And I'm happy that I learned. Instead of getting bitter, to get better. And he made me grow up and made me toughen up. And made me become a soldier. And I had to learn to say yes sir when I wanted to say quite another thing. but I proved faithful. And what I'm looking for as a senior pastor, now developing young ministers myself, people coming, I'm called. You ain't called and you're not even ready to submit to some basic training. How you ever going to be a soldier? Don't tell me you called and then everything got to suit you and got to be what you want. Pastor looked at me funny. Sometimes I'm funny looking. What am I going to do? Ooh, this is a rough message. They only gonna sell three CDs. Y'all don't want this. You need other people. Let me speak a word to singles while I'm on the partnership theme. I see y'all drawing up now. <laughs> you just see them. They just all say, ooh. Let me speak a word to singles who hope to, plan to, dream to be married one day. Some of y'all, look. the look on your face is like, if I try to slip out, they're going to know it's me. 
Still ahead, the second half of today's Destined for Victory message with Pastor Paul Shepard, Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California. You can listen to this broadcast on demand at our website, pastorpaul.net. That's pastorpaul.net. You can also listen and subscribe to the podcast at Spotify, at Apple Podcasts, or wherever you enjoy your podcasts. And we'd like to thank you who sustain Destined for Victory with your prayers and financial support. Gifts that help Pastor Paul share the gospel all over the world. To connect with what God is doing through Destined for Victory and to make your generous gift, visit PastorPaul.net. That's PastorPaul.net or call 855-339-5500. If you want to recognize a good partner when you see one, remember these three words, vision, values, veracity. Now, with the rest of today's Destined for Victory message, Finding the Right Partners, here once again is Pastor Paul. Make sure they tell the truth. A whole lot of folk got a game, got a rap, got a talk, sound impressive till you watch them. There's a whole lot of people who are professional liars. They lie so well, they don't even know they're lying. I promise you they are. Have you ever met people who lie so well, they act like a lie is the truth? Check out their veracity. I don't want to hear how you say you treat the opposite sex. I want to see it. I want to see the fruit, the evidence. I want to talk to your ex. I want to talk to your mama. Don't tell me how well you treat your parents. I want to see y'all. I want to go. We pre-engage. We thinking about each other. You know what? Let me go with you to your family reunion. And sit over there somewhere with your plate and make them think you're not looking and see how they interact. See, y'all date, but you don't investigate. Kind of anointing is this on me today? (laughs) Amos 3.3 says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? I can't walk with you. Unless we are in sync, I know where you're going and I agree with where you're going. So I need to check out your veracity. I need to check out your vision. When you get where you're going, where will you be? That's your vision. Tell me about your vision. Tell me what you see in your future. That's a date. Not looking at legs and shoulders and and outfits. And mm, that give me that, that made me feel some kind of way. You don't need to be feeling that way now. <laughs> Put on some old pitiful britches and sit down and talk. <laughs> don't just see them when they fixed up at their best. You pre-engage, ring the bell when they ain't expecting you over. Ding dong. What you doing here? I need to see something. <laughs> I need to see you with that rag on your head. I need to see curlers going every which way. Man, I need to see you in them gym trunks you've been wearing since you was in school. You need to talk. When you get where you're going, where will you be? Share with me your vision. Do you see yourself leaving the area? Do you feel called to start a business? Are you not going to have a nine to five because you want to be an entrepreneur? Because that could mean you're going to be paying all the bills. Uh (laughs) Well, see, he said he got he said he going to start this bit. I know what he said. What has he done? What has he done well, successfully, continually, repeatedly? And what did he do while he was getting that up and running to make sure his bills were paid? Speaking of bills, what's your credit score? (laughs) 
if I can bowl your credit score, <laughs> Dorothy, help me out. If I can bowl your credit score, we cannot walk together. Ken, I know you fine, beautiful, cute, handsome, all that. But if your credit score can fit on a bowling sheet, can't work with that. You have work to do. Just like Jacob had to work seven years before he could get Rachel, your next seven years are going to be getting your credit score up to something livable. And that I can marry my strength to. Do not marry your strength to somebody else's weakness trying to make a partnership. Woo, I'll be glad myself when this message is over. This is rough. Find out what they have in mind. What you going to do? What, how do you see yourself operating in ministry? Is it vocational or volunteer? How do you see your self-operating in career? Is it working for somebody and climbing the ladder? Or is it being purely an entrepreneur? And what have you done to this point? If you haven't had a successful anything, why should I believe you're going to have this wonderfully successful business later? Why should I chase your pipe dreams when there's no evidence that these dreams are going to be made a reality. And what are your values? Is marriage and family more important than work to you? Than vision, than ministry, than career? I know people whose ministries seem to be successful, but that's only because y'all don't know them. Their homes are a wreck. I know people who can preach the lights out but they go home and cuss each other out. And you don't know because all you're doing is looking at the pulpit performance. You need to find out the values and the real deal. You need to find out what they really think. See, if they operate according to the word, marriage life, family life, takes a higher priority even over ministry. Biblically. God won't let you save the world and lose your family. I heard a pastor preach a couple of decades ago, got it on tape, converted it to CD. And they were just a sound. They were saying, if there's ever a conflict between my ministry and my marriage, the ministry has to go. Because I'm called to take care of my spouse. I heard the same person who I have on CD saying that 20 some years ago. I heard the same person a couple weeks ago. And here's the quote. Marriage is an option. Ministry is a calling. End quote. My wife was sitting there with me. We looked at each other and said, that ain't what you said. You know what happened? They decided since they didn't want to run the full length from first to second to try to steal the base, they called a timeout and they moved second base much closer. And they think they're still playing. What they said then was true. What they say now is a lie. The Bible doesn't support the notion that marriage is optional. Like if your spouse get on your nerves, all you got to do is please God and do your ministry. You don't have to worry about them. I know a pastor who preached for a friend of mine one year as his special guest preacher, brought his wife with him to the speaking engagement and all that. And this pastor told me the next time I had him within a couple of years, I had him back. And the next time I had him, he walked in my office with a lady I didn't recognize. And he said, let me introduce you to my wife. He had dropped off the old and picked up the new and wanted to preach. 
And I said to my friend, glad he didn't come to my church. Because I'd have said, I don't know about this. And I don't know what happened between then and now. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to preach tonight. I promise you that's what I would have said. I'm going to preach. I know you came. I know you were expecting an honorarium love offering. But till I get answers, the Bible I preach from tell me I got to be the husband of one wife. There are grounds, but there are few. And I'm almost positive his wife didn't leave him unbiblically. I am almost sure he got sick of some stuff about her. And then he saw something else and said, the Lord is my shepherd. I see what I want. (laughs) Y'all not ready for me. (laughs) So while you're single, you got stuff to work on. You had time to be dating and going out to dinner and pleasing one another and stimulating senses and showing them how great your cologne is and your wardrobe and and you just that's just just, you just built and all that Uh, yes fine great we'll get to that I promise we will but right now I need to know some real stuff about you so have real conversations don't I tell you all the time don't sit up spend all your time in dark restaurants they turn the lights down way low and you just see each other and a little candle on the thing and your face is flickering in the flame. <laughs> and you look so wonderful in the flame and you up there perpetrating a fraud. You know you loud and rowdy. Now you won't even laugh your regular laugh. <laughs> no, you loud and rowdy. Just go on and show them how you laugh. No, you sitting up there with your little cute clothes on and just sitting there looking at each other and listening politely and all of that stuff. And when they say something funny, you say, (laughs) (laughs) You perpetrating a fraud. It's a fraud. You need to be arrested. Whether in marriage or in business or in ministry, Finding the right partners will be crucial to your success. They pick you up when you fall, and they can be trusted in times when you can't even trust yourself. Destined for Victory was built in large part by the power of partnership and the power of prayer. And today we'd like to pray for you. Share your request with us using the contact feature at PastorPaul.net. That's PastorPaul.net. While you're there, please make sure to ask for Pastor Paul's monthly letter of encouragement, yours at no cost or obligation. Well, Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, God has a specific plan for your life, one he prepared before the foundation of the world. And if you want to accomplish it, just as we learned in today's message, you cannot do it alone. In his latest booklet, Purpose Partners, Pastor Paul Shepard helps you discover how to find the right kind of partners and talks about the kingdom impact these godly relationships can have. That's Purpose Partners, our thank you gift this month by request for your generous donation to Destined for Victory. Call us at 855-339-5500 or visit pastorpaul.net to make a safe and secure donation online. Or mail your gift to Destined for Victory, Post Office Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Come on, somebody. Got a wonderful relationship. Everything's going. Y'all clicking on all cylinders. You pray. Y'all sick of one another. You still pray. And that's what you want to learn to do. Be a person who prays all the time because God is ready to manifest his glory in your life. And so you need to develop an effective prayer life. You'll hear that next time when Pastor Paul Shepard shares his message, Foundations for Effective Prayer. Until then, remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.